In this video, I'm going to talk about scatter and systematic uncertainties. Now, let's say a measurement has some uncertainty, like almost all measurements do. That means if you make the measurement over and over again, you're going to get different answers each time. So, for example, if we look here, I've simulated a whole bunch of measurements with a mean value of 5 and a standard deviation of 1. And what you can see is that some of the measurements are high. There are a few as high as 8, a few low as 2, but most of them are fairly close to the expected value 5. But there's a quite, a quite a range here. This range is called the scatter. And it's a measure of how much uncertainty there is. What does it look like in real data? Well, here are some data on uh, search for gravity waves. We are trying to measure the distortion of space-time, and what you can see is, even when there's no gravity wave, the distortion is constantly jumping around by a very small amount. This is due to all sorts of noise in your detectors. But every now and then, on top of this noise, you get a real signal. So here's the noise, and there's a real signal of uh, two black holes colliding and then it goes back to the noise level. So you're making repeat measurements over here, repeat measurements, and you get a different value each time, and that's called scatter. And then here you're getting a signal which is bigger than the scatter, which tells you you've picked up something that's real. This is an image, actually. This little fuzzy thing here is a, a giant cloud of gas 10.8 billion light years away that I discovered. But the image, again, notice that the supposedly dark areas of the image are not all the same. They're mottled. They've got speckles. And that speckle, once again, is noise. You're making repeat measurements of the brightness of an apparently dark part of the sky. And because of various forms of noise, you don't get the same answer each time. But then every now and then, like here, you get a distinctly higher area due to something real. Now, there are two different sorts of uncertainties or errors. And they are different in the way they deal with the scatter. First are random errors. Random errors could make the point high or could make it low, and they've got an equal chance of doing either. So they scatter the points around a true value. On the other hand, all the points could be systematically off to one side. So for example, let's say this is a true value, but all the points are scattered around this value instead. That is a systematic error. If you've got a random error, Sure, each individual point might be high or it might be low, but if you take enough of them and average them, you're going to get pretty close to the correct value. But if you have a systematic error, then the points are scattered around the wrong place, and no amount of averaging is going to help you. One example of a systematic error is a so-called parallax error. Let's say you're trying to measure the distance of something with a ruler, but your pointer is above the scale or away from the scale. If you look vertically down, you're going to get the correct reading. But if you're looking at an angle, your reading is going to be off a bit because of the way the light travels. So in this case, making lots of repeat measurements, you're always going to get a value that's off to the side, and that's a systematic error. Another example would be measuring uh, a time with a stopwatch. Because of human reaction time, if you see something and then press the button, you're always going to be a bit late. So you might be more late sometimes than others, which give you a scatter, but on average you're always going to be late, which will be a systematic error. Here's more data I took. This is a spectrum of a quasar, a giant black hole in the middle of a distant galaxy. So what we're plotting here is the wavelength of the light and the amount of light at each wavelength. Now up here, down in the blue end of the spectrum, you can see it's noisy, it's jumping all around. And that's an example of random uncertainties. Some points are high, some points are low, but you can probably pretty much trace through the middle of them where the true spectrum goes. But down here, there's a whole bunch of spikes which are actually systematic errors. These are actually due to OH emission lines in the Earth's atmosphere. They haven't been subtracted out correctly. So we're looking through the atmosphere because the telescope's on the ground, and that produces systematic errors. So these points are high, and averaging won't make them go away.